I'm going to tell you something you already know. Picture a man in the hospital, um, an older man, he was admitted because he didn't feel well. He chokes on his food and a few days later he has a 100 degree fever. You get a chest x-ray and sh you see a right lower lobe infiltrate. Almost anyone can make the diagnosis here. This is aspiration pneumonia and he needs clindamycin ASAP. But have you heard of aspiration pneumonitis? This is a very similar disease to aspiration pneumonia, but a lot of people aren't aware of it because it presents very differently. So imagine a much younger guy. He's admitted for observation following a surgery. Let's say he has a history of alcoholism. He starts to feel nauseous and he vomits. Five minutes later, you know, he's all cleaned up and he says, oh, I feel fine. About three hours later, he has a fever. Not days, but hours. And this time you're like, okay, what, what, what is going on? This doesn't make sense. You get an x-ray, but it does not show a low bar infiltration. It instead just shows junk everywhere. His entire left lung has infiltrates. Does this person need antibiotics? I really hope you're saying right now, the answer is no. This person has aspiration pneumonitis, not pneumonia, pneumonitis. The things we know about aspiration pneumonia, like I said, it's a micro aspiration, it's due to an infection, they're going to be coughing up sputum, they're going to have a low bar pneumonia. This person needs aggressive treatment with clindamycin or Augmentin. On the other hand, pneumonitis, this is a macro aspiration and it's caused by large amounts of gastric acid. I'm thinking over half a liter entering the lungs. It's a direct chemical injury. This is not an infectious thing. And unlike the low bar pneumonia seen in aspiration pneumonia, this causes a diffuse lung injury. You're going to see infiltrates in both lungs. Um, this is going to be a much more diffuse pneumonia and this is going to happen to a much younger person typically. The treatment is not antibiotics. You want to think about airway management. The way I would look at this is, okay, someone's already aspirated. Is there a risk they'll do it again? So you really need to be thinking about the airway here. The biggest thing for board exams is looking at the x-ray. With aspiration pneumonitis, you see infiltrates um, diffusely, whereas in aspiration pneumonia, it's much more in one lobe. One little bonus thing that I see come up a lot, if you want to think about, you know, a person when they're standing up, if you aspirate, it's going directly down. But picture that same person lying flat in a hospital bed. If they aspirate, it's kind of go around. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you guys.